I just wanted to go over our next essay assignment and to give you some pointers in how to write a very successful essay. Um, so here are the four choices. Now you just have to choose one. And I'm going to go over each one in detail. Um, and I also want to remind you that here is the way your essay will be graded. Remember that you want to have a strong argument. You want to use ample examples from the text that you're discussing. You want to organize your essay into clear introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion. And then your thesis should also refer to the text that we've discussed in class. Um, remember to look for your grammar errors and make sure that there's no errors in your essay. So let me go into each question individually so that I can show you the best way to proceed. So here's our first question. You can choose to write about Machiavelli. How does Niccolo Machiavelli problematize the stereotype of a good prince or king? Why do you think he does so? Why does he bring in the concept of fortune and how does he treat it? What is the legacy of his political theorizing? Now, the way this question is structured, it also implies the structure to use in your essay. So if you look at what I have outlined here for you, in the intro, you want to provide some background on Machiavelli and his political writings in The Prince. And then, of course, in the intro, you need a thesis statement that's going to focus on how Machiavelli thinks beyond just the good or bad ruler. What is he really doing in his essay? And then I would, do, I would use two body paragraphs here. The first body paragraph would address what the stereotype of the good king is and how does he disprove it? Why does he do that? In the second body paragraph of this essay, that's where I would talk about this concept of fortune. Remember, he describes fortune in, in terms of a flood as a way to prepare for bad fortune. So in this second paragraph, describe what he is saying by talking about fortune and also describe how he, um, you know, creates that allegory of the flood. And what is the role of fortune for a ruler? Why does a ruler have to be wary of fortune? And then in the conclusion here, I would just state the legacy of his political theorizing. What do we take away from the prince? And what makes this text so special? Why is it included in our canon of world literature? Okay, so that's for Machiavelli. If you want to write about Cervantes, you could do question number two. Question number two is, what is Miguel de Cervantes parodying through the ridiculous figure of Don Quixote? Comment on the change that this obsessed man wrought on himself and the kind of speeches he makes or misadventures he rushes into. What is the underlying message of his satire? So if I were to choose this question, I would tackle it this way. I would have four paragraphs total. I would have an introduction paragraph where I give some background on the novel Don Quixote. And by background, I mean just a statement of what the basic plot is and who the main characters are. And then in the intro, I would also include a thesis statement about what exactly is being satirized here. What is Cervantes making fun of? In the first body paragraph, I would talk about what Don Quixote is trying to mimic or what he's parodying in the story. Who is he trying, or what is he trying to imitate? And then also I would make sure to describe how he changes. Remember in the beginning of the story, he becomes Don Quixote and he finds an armor and he gets his horse and he acquires a squire and he changes his name to Don Quixote de la Mancha. And so in the second body paragraph, then I would describe some of the misadventures that he goes on. And I would focus on what Cervantes is making fun of in these misadventures. And then in the conclusion of this essay, in that very last paragraph, I would just describe what the underlying message is of his satire. What is he trying to get across to us by making fun of these figures? Okay, so if 
I chose to write about question number three and the new world. Let me move this down a little bit. I would also use four, four total paragraphs and I would do it in this way. So let's read the question. What do the new world texts like the Popol Vuh and the Florentine Codex tell us about the history and aftermath of Spanish conquest of Native American civilizations? Why is it important to preserve their history and legacy? So if I were going to tackle this question for my essay, I would start with an introduction paragraph where I give some background on the Popol Vuh and the Florentine Codex. What are they? What Native American peoples do they represent? And then I would make sure my thesis statement tells how we can learn from these texts and what they contribute to the study of world literature. In the first body paragraph, I would then talk about the Popol Vuh. What does that text tell us about the history or aftermath of Spanish conquest? And then body paragraph number two, that's where I would deal with the Florentine Codex, and I would just focus on the Florentine Codex in that paragraph, particularly what it tells us about the history and the aftermath of Spanish conquest. Then in the conclusion of this essay, I would describe why it's important to preserve this legacy. Why should we still study these texts and what is it and what is so important about these texts that we need to hold on to? And so that's our third option. Then there's a fourth option. You could write about Christine de Pizan's The Book of the City of Ladies. So here, for this question, comment on the significance of Christine de Pizan's achievement in The Book of the City of the Ladies. Why is it considered such a monumental feat today? So if I were to tackle this question, I would have in my introduction some background on Christine de Pizon's The Book of the City of Ladies. When was it written? What is it about? What's the basic, the general idea of the book? And I would have a thesis statement on what de Pizon's goal in writing this book is. What is she, why is she doing this? What is her point? And then for the first body paragraph, I would go into detail about her goal in writing the book, and I might even bring in those three ladies that appear in the beginning of the text. And what their role is, what the point is, why she brought them in. And then in the second body paragraph of the essay, I would go into some of the stories that she tells, the story of Dido or Penthesilea or Lavinia, and I would describe how those examples help her achieve her goal. Her goal is to really change the reputation of women and get rid of this negative stereotype that has been haunting them. And so she uses Dido, Penthesilea, and Lavinia as examples of women who are great, who are admirable. And then in the conclusion of this essay, I would conclude with some statements on what is so monumental about her project. What is so, what is special about this book? And why is it such an important book, especially in the history of feminism? So I hope I've given you some ideas on how to tackle this essay. If you have any questions or if you need some feedback, please don't hesitate to email me. I will be more than happy to give you some feedback. Um, other than that, I look forward to reading what you have to say. All right, good luck. I'll see you soon.